Quick. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Preacher in the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Woo! Hell yeah! Gentlemen, I appreciate you joining. Thank you guys so much. For those that may not know your band whatsoever, can you please uh, properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you're kicking it right now. Plug or promote anything you'd like. I got this. There it is. There. Can you get the full? There, there it goes. All right. We are, uh, we are Preacher. I'm Nate. This is Stan. Uh, the other dudes are here, too. We got Alan and Chris, but... I mean, we're too wide to get them in on the camera. So, no worries. <laughs> but we're from Reno, Nevada. Hell yeah! How long have you guys uh, been been a band? Six. Six five, years. Five, five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. Is is everyone originally from Nevada, or, or did somebody anybody travel from a far distance to join? Or oh, we're all born and raised here. Um, now. <laughs> Well, I guess not. All well, every, everybody else is like a Reno. I, I'm, I, I'm actually, I'm actually from Seattle, Washington. Really? Did, was yeah. the band, was the band the reason you moved to to Nevada, or was it just other other reasons? Oh, I know. It was kind of nice. Took care of Grandma before she left. Rest in peace, Grandma. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Grams. Yeah, your guys' signal is kind of going like in and out a little bit, so I'm getting like every other couple of words, and it'll be like two seconds, and it'll freeze two seconds, just for heads up. But um, why don't we why don't we start off with a jam and maybe we can fix the technical difficulties? But uh, I think Mora is one of my favorites. I know it's at the top of your algorithm system. Is do you find that that is is one of the fan favorites, or is that just because of the Spotify algorithm that it's in the top? No, it, I would say it probably is. It seems like a fan favorite overall. That we have not played live since like the first time we played it live because we are not very good at selecting tunings as a band. And the tunings that we picked required us to have like 13,000 guitars to play live. <laughs> so we apologize, but we're working on it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so that's something that like the, the engineer would just tune, tell you to tune differently and you didn't think ahead as far as, like I've never had someone uh, say that, like as far as going from a uh, uh, recording to live aspect. Is that just in the moment in the studio, the, the producer suggesting different tone? Well, so we, we're all self-produced. All our recordings are done in-house. Um, this one was kind of a special case. So our typical standard seven-string tunings drop G sharp, and I could not sing it high enough in that tuning, so I had to drop it a step. So that's drop G, and all of our other seven-string songs are G sharp. It's a good explanation. Yeah, so, as far as, but from like an actual like producing stuff, um, our, our drummer's just like, I don't care. Just do whatever you want and get out of here. So, we, yeah, there's, yeah, there's no, there's, <laughs> Hell yeah. Fair this enough. This thing is just, hurry up. What are you yeah, guys, yeah, what are you guys chugging on? I see, I see a Truly. I've got some whiskey, uh, a Natty Light. I've got some sake. Let's get a little loose. Let's get a little loose. Cheers. Cheers. I appreciate you guys joining. I'm going to dive right in with the, the live version, the live music video of The Man Who Laughs. What is this song about? Oh God, that that's a good one. I I don't know. It's been a while because like this song was written like a really long time ago, and it just like finally got like brought into life, which is really cool. I don't know if I said that great. Brought in, brought in, got brought brought to life, brought to life, whatever. Cool. Um, but yeah, no, it's more or less just kind of like a two faced thing. Like it was when I was like being really politically angsty, <laughs> you know, like I like to do sometimes, and it's just talking about basically like. With, with everything going wrong in the world, right? Like, as far as, like, our leaders and everything making you feel like crap, um, I'm just trying to, like, shine through in the lyrics to say that, you know what, you can, actually, you, you can actually have a good day. You know what I mean? So to, like, keep your head up, feel good about yourself, try to, and just picture a world where, like, some of this negative shit just doesn't exist, you know? I can dig it. I forgot to introduce uh, JB, by the way. JB is my co-host. JB, do you have a question for, for the fellas before I play, before I play uh, this song? Yeah, so you guys are from Nevada. This might be a a far left field question. Uh, do you guys by chance know Sky Drifter, the band? I have actually communicated with them over our social media. Uh, you know, they're kind of elbow area trying to get 
hopefully next year get together with them and do something out there that would be awesome. Were they Elko? I first remember why did I think yep, like Elko. Order? Elko, yeah, that's a good call. Elko. Oh, oh. I know it, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, they're, they're good I, friends I of ours. We, we, you guys got to totally link up. Your your sounds are a little bit different. You're a little bit heavier than they are, but uh, it still make for for a good old party for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, we'll, we'll come to Elko any day of the week, and and then the minute we can get stuff romping out here, obviously we'll, we'll we'll give them golden ticket to come out in Reno and see how they like it. You know? Hell yeah, golden ticket. I like that. The man who laughs. When you guys were when you guys were in high school, what do you what are you driving around your car screaming and singing at the top of your lungs? What what album or two? Ooh, 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 ooh. It dies today, sirens. That album for like the entire time. <laughs> Hell yeah, good call. Yeah, it was like betray you, um, bury you dead. You got Alan. What what do I got? Alan's got Green Day. He was listening no, to Green Day. I was, not, I was not listening to Green Day at <laughs> that time, actually. I was listening to um, uh, For the Fallen Dreams. For the I'm Fallen Dreams. Yeah. By you, Chris. Emery. 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 Thrice. Yeah. Lots of thrice. <clears throat> but, nothing, but nothing that has such like high, high, high pitch singing like that song. What 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 yeah, high I'm, pitch singing band? Like no no sirens or, <laughs> or picturesque or anything like that? And that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be in high school, but. Oh, definitely got to drive. Like, especially because we've been playing a lot with those guys lately. We've become friends. It's just been, it's kind of surreal because you're like, dude, I literally, like, bumped you in my car, like, every day. You know, <laughs> in high school, and now you're, like, hanging out with them. You're like, saw. I, like I thought the same thing when we, when we did our first interview with them, and I think we've done, like, 10 now at this point. So I, I agree with that, that, uh, that saying right there. It's weird. Like, I used to jam them all the time, too. And I'm like, dude, now you guys are, like, friends. I have your phone numbers. It's weird. It's weird. But it's so so rad though because like you know you're like you know their discography before you like you get there but yet you're still just like hanging out and like learning new things about people that are now like involved in your life instead of like well you were just heavy like mentally or, or musically influencing me but now i'm like dude i can call you big bro i need some advice you know it's the coolest thing in the world it's the best did you guys uh decide on the the trivia force go Interesting. Okay, Forrest Gump. JB, hit him with a question and, and give me. That's your favorite movie? Yeah, that's my favorite movie. Hit him with a question and give me a second to look up some Forrest Gump trivia. So, shows any uh, shows coming up um, in the next month, month or or so, or what's going on? Shows. Okay, so we're kind of unplugged for the next couple of months, which is kind of nice, you know. Because we've been at it for, like, the entire year. It was so funny because I don't know if you guys know the band Aberrants. They're, like, really good friends of ours, too. And we played a show with them out in Lodi. And we're like, God, how are you guys? And they're like, dudes, you literally just been playing shows since we've seen you guys last. And I was like, were we? And then you start looking back for, like, the entire year. I was like, oh, my God. We really have just been nonstop playing. So we had some things on deck for to maybe close out the year. But they kind of fell through schedule-wise. So we were like, you know what? It wouldn't hurt to kind of take a couple months off because there's been things we've been really wanting to do for our live show that we really just haven't had time to like implement yet. So this is a good time for us to kind of sit back and do those cool things that we want to do. So that way, when you do see us live next year, it's just like even better. And then um, we, we just we just like to write, too. So we're just nonstop writing. Can, yeah, we, right on. can we ask what some of those maybe just a taste of what some of those things you're trying to implement are? Well, so. As of now, like, since we have such, like, a big, like, uh, palette of, like, numbers are starting to grow and we have so many shows under our belts and we've played a lot of accolades, um, you know, people are starting to get interested. So, like, another big thing is, like, incorporating, like, endorsements, you know, so there's newer gear starting to show up that we can look at to start using that we haven't used before. Um, lighting has always been a big thing where it's, like, you know, how do we kind of run this, like, on our own and stuff? I mean, we obviously don't have, like, the budget of all the world to have a bunch of people travel with us. So our biggest thing is how to remain DIY but give like the most killer show that's like you haven't seen before and really step it up like that level wise, you know? Instead of just doing the same thing over and over again, I mean, that's the reason why you see me in like Mario suits and <laughs> cheetah suits and stuff like that, because it just gets boring seeing everybody like in their favorite death metal band shirt in which, you know, it's great. You know, I love everybody supports that, but like everybody kind of looks the same on stage. So our biggest thing is trying to veer away from that and kind of give you this experience you take home, like, holy crap, like for those 30 minutes, I didn't know what the hell was going on in a good way. You know, like I was totally just, 
engulfed in this live show. Just tractor beam, just uh, sucked into it. Just yep. I totally get it. Like, I know we are feng shui already, but now it's just like, let's elevate it. Let's take it further. You know what I mean? The most serious question I've asked all day. In Forrest Gump. Oh, I'm 5'8". What? <laughs> <laughs> what is Forrest Gump's favorite book? Uh, 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 Curious George. That is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. He gives it to Little Forrest at the end of the movie also. Well done. Damn it. I haven't stumped anybody all day. Uh, also, pick a number 1 through 12. I have to do some hot sauce as a torture. 7. If you guys ever come to... Uh, well, also in Nevada, actually... Cali Care Group, I love my weed.com. If you ever need any ganja, well, there you go. Just hit them up. They'll deliver it right to you. Do you guys do you guys uh consume cannabis yourself? We don't anymore because it kind of stopped serving us, so we get like uber paranoid. But our guitar player Chris, um pretty snoop dog. I don't know how he does it. I like it. Awesome. Weed every day. I can kick it with you, Chris. <laughs> we'll we'll chill sometime, bro. <laughs> like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But like out of nowhere, I was just like the walls can hear me talking. I'm like, well, no shit, Nate, you live there. You know, like, <laughs> but like, it was just, I just couldn't go out in public and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I should probably not do this anymore. If uh, if someone had, um, if you're hanging out with uh, like a group, they'd never heard your band. It can't be a song we've already played. What song are you like, yo, please listen to my band, but this is the one song you're putting in the headphones when you hand it to them? I'd say Dream State. That one just gets you. I'm sure it's different for everybody though. So, yeah, usually we'll start with "Lovely" because it's kind of more, I would say, more radio. I guess they're both kind of more on the lighter side. Yeah, I, I can really just hand them the Dream State album and be like, if you're gonna get an impression from us, listen to this because heart and soul went into that. Especially us, just like, you know what? Instead of just doing like a, a an EP release show and trying to bring all our friends out and everything, we're like, let's hit the road and hit as many places as we can to promote our record on our own. Hell yeah, I dig that. Well, let's jam Dream State off the Dream State EP. Guys, if you're watching, you're feeling the music, please support the band. Hit that follow button. You guys plan to do like a, a little a little Cali run all over SoCal or any, any time in the future, please let me know. I will definitely come out and support. This is this is right up my alley, personally, from when I just listen to him like my spare time. Dude, we're coming to Whiskey A Go Go. When? In January. In January? When? I'll, I'll, January. I'm going to write it down right now. I'll calendar it right now. January what? January 20th. Whiskey a go go. 25th? Oh, yeah. You said 25th? 22nd. 22nd Sunday. Okay. Preacher. Is Usually on Sunday, they're free shows. Is it? Is it? Is it a free one? Okay. Well, they don't know. But. <laughs> I will double check you because I don't know. Yeah, double Never check if you can like, real quick because... It, I mean, that's even a bigger incentive. It's a free show. Who would miss that? Yeah, I'll see you guys there. Hell yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a good time. We'll dance, party, have a have a little smoky smoke with Chris out back before the show. You know how it is. We'll get down. Yeah. <laughs> smoke weed every day. Go up to the hideout and have some drinks, dude. There we go. JB, hit him with one more question because I'm gonna stump him on the next Forrest Gump. <laughs> Yo, so. Let's let's see. So when when you were growing up, were you listening to music um, that is the same to what you're producing now as a band, or are you guys totally different genre rise? Do you think? No, you can go first. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're kind of that weird band. It's like everybody like sees us and thinks we we listen every day to what we like what we were like playing thing. But I feel like it couldn't be like the complete opposite of where we're at. I think, I mean, we love this genre and we do listen to it. And um, I just think when we were kind of growing up, it just was something that we were like more passionate to play than it is that's like stuck on our playlist, you know? Cause like me, I'm more of like a hip hop head. You know what I mean? Like I listen to probably hip hop more than I do like rock music outside of it just because it's like nice on the ears or pop music. God, I love like radio jams. And I don't know why, you know, like anything like that. I think it's my wife's fault to be honest. <laughs> like, you know, she's got like Justin Bieber and all that stuff. And I'm like, turn that shit up. You know, so I don't know. That's, that's the best way I can, can do that. But I'm very well versed in it because, yes, I've listened to it all. 
and I enjoy it. But it's just like, you know, if I had to pick a genre, I don't, I don't see myself with like a, a headphone microphone. I don't think I'm pretty enough or skinny enough to be on stage to dance around and sing pop music or I would. Um, I don't know, just something drew me to playing metalcore <laughs> and just being like, you know what? This is something I want to do for the rest of my freaking life. You know, this show is not announced yet. It's, it's not even on the whiskey site, so I can't find out any more information on it regarding January 22nd. But I'm just trying to map it out because I want to come out. So I'm just trying to, I was looking into it, but uh, I'm sure it'll be announced soon. We'll get the details from our boy, uh, War Warrior Dave. Mm -hmm. Big old smooth just on the cheek, man. Yeah. <laughs> Forrest Gump! Forrest Gump obtained how much money from using his ping pong paddle? Forrest Gump obtained how much money from using his ping pong paddles? He, he in was fact, it 1.2 million? It's a lot less than that. He used this money to buy his okay, okay. his shrimp boat. What was the second guess? 380,000. Not even close. We got him. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. Isn't it 10 million? No, no, no. You guys are not even close. It's 25 grand. 25 grand oh is what he got from ping pong paddles and he used it to pay to buy his shrimp boat. So unfortunately, oh. now if you have that hot sauce, bust it out, and uh, unfortunately, we stumped you on that one. Stumped them. Stumped those mother. Stumped them. Oh man, you guys are going in. That one is fairly hot. I've had it before. It is uh, leaves a little tickle on the throat for sure. Fresh bottle. Fresh bottle, too. <laughs> what was this gummies thing you guys were talking about? Let me get one of those. Here, yeah, take that. They have these spicy gummies or something like that, JB. I'm, I'm curious what that is also. Oh, man. Do you see that? This is going to definitely kick things into gear. Yeah, try that. Try that for sure. I'll do this one. While you let, me know, let me know how that is. Um, while they're doing that... While they're doing that, I'm going to throw in uh, love language real quick, and uh, we'll see how tortured these guys are. I'm going to full screen you, too. Talk to me. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Dude, it tastes like the one chip sounds are good. Like, it's just bringing me flashbacks. <laughs> How's the so, gummy? Uh, it's like rubber. It's not hot, though? No. That sucks. <laughs> That sucks. Thanks for being good sports. <laughs> Sorry for it sucking, but thanks for being good sports. Hell yeah. Bro, that oh, that yeah. picture of that corgi is badass, though. Oh, yeah, Hell yeah, dude. That is Peachy Keens. That is, um... That's Alan's dog. That's <laughs> Alan's dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing, uh, doing while you're time, suffering... While you're suffering, give me the best advice you'd give any band that's just formed today in a garage. What's the one piece of advice you'd give them? Everybody hates you when you get famous. <laughs> I'm, <just> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, no, dude, just um, have fun doing it. Oh, God. And pay, play with your friends before you can think about, like, the talent of music. Because it will come. It will come if you play enough. And uh, don't give up. Have a lot of fun with it. And uh, holy shit. Uh, uh, yeah, dude, that's the best advice I can give to a uh, up and coming band, dude. It's just everybody's gonna tell you no, but fuck them. Doesn't matter as long as you keep telling yourself yes. You guys are gonna have the time of your lives if it's something you really want to do. Well said. <sighs> same same question for you while you're while you're eating the. Is it hot at all now that you're? It's getting there. I'm gonna start sweat now. Okay. Oh uh, so god, I'm pretty sure I'm drooling. I don't know. Oh my god, it's so sucky. Fuck you. Um, I think like the best advice I'll give is uh, holy shit. Um, focus on the music first. I think if you you focus on the songwriting and you try to write really good stuff, um, stuff that's in, Jesus Christ, <laughs> stuff that's important to you, it's gonna go a lot farther than trying to immediately go out and play shows and tour and do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Record a single. Record a single before you play a show. That's what you should do. But all make right. sure that single's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate it so 
Oh, I don't like this. JB, ask him something important that's gonna that's that's deep in thought. It's more fun while they're while they're while they're burning and suffering. All right, let me let me ask you this. Um, yeah. If a woodchuck was chewing, no, no, no I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, um, if if you had a choice to play anywhere in the United States as a band, what location would it be? Like an actual city or like continent, state? What is it? Well, just like a, like a venue, like a well known venue or sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that would be a good one right there. You nailed it. Yeah, that would be that would be on my list. Either there or Staples Center, but now crypto crypto dot com center. Some of the big ones for sure. Big ass arena, dude. We've always wanted to play an arena. Well, our biggest thing is we just we want to play people to show up. So <laughs> we have, we have to... let's say you we just played people. that show, fifty sixty thousand people. Tonight's the night of all nights where we're smoking, we're drinking, we're doing shots. Who's the last man in the band standing? Me. You Me can, 100%. You can out party everybody? I will put you all to bed. Yeah, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'll be at breakfast and you're like, I hate you. You're like a cyborg. This is the machine. Just keeps on going. <laughs> yes. I promise you. I try my, but I just can't do it. God, this shit still burns and awesome yeah so so you have access to to any any vocalist in the in the entire galaxy living or deceased if they're living they're going to do it for free you don't have to worry about the money who's the feature on your next single prince prince interesting Prince, baby 100 percent. that man's so talented oh yeah because i can only imagine what he'd bring he'd be like oh no not that riff. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Never heard before. Oh my God, Prince, the metalcore king. See what I did there? That, is, did there? <clears throat> that is hilarious. Hell yeah. Uh, let's do. Let's do a couple more questions. And we'll let them go. Uh, JB, what is what? What is your final question? My final question is, if something happened in the world and something came to you and you guys had to change genres as a band what do you think you guys would change to k-pop k-pop <laughs> and get like a lot skinnier well me everybody else is fine yeah i would try to lose weight doing all the choreography I put this on so i wouldn't eat anything <laughs> you just put it on every meal breakfast yeah and but yeah i'm not eating that nope nope <laughs> what would you say, sir? Um, I feel like I feel like we could do pop. I don't know if I'd want to do it, but I feel like we could do it. <laughs> the world has determined that you now have to do it for sure. Uh, what's the what's the worst show that you guys ever played, and why? Everyone has a terrible show, but this is the absolute worst one. We don't talk about it, but we're talking about it. Yeah. I'll let him go first. I'm trying to think. I have one. Um, so, in one of the bands that we were in, um, this is our last show that we ever played. Someone tuned my guitar a half step down and fucked with my tuner before we played. So the whole time I was tuning, it was showing me that it was the right note, and it was a half step down the entire time. <laughs> and... I wasn't able to correct it, and it was just absolute misery. <laughs> is that now? Is it? I don't play guitar, so is is that something that in, in the audience we're immediately like something's wrong, or we probably yeah. wouldn't notice it, or you, we would immediately be like something's wrong. Okay, now, uh, well, I don't know if it's just me or <laughs> basically yeah. it's, it's like one note down, so. They call that a dissonant, which is like the most unpleasant sound you can make. But then you have everything else going on in the right tuning. You have one thing just god just, awful just sucking. Thing just one thing just sucking in the background. Yeah, yeah. That and that kind of sum that up. I don't think we've ever had like a show that was unbearable because like when Preacher started and we got out there and everything, we were just happy to play. 
you know, got this new life in us and everything too. So it's like every situation we came across, we were making light of it anyway. Now I, I can, I can't say the same for like the business logistical side of things because, you know, there are a lot of people that are not very nice out there and there's a lot of things we can't say, but some things are just better life unsaid. Um, you know what I mean? Like I'm not here to like smear anybody or anything like that, but we've definitely been muffed on like the business aspect of things or on the back end of things with promoters and stuff like that. That has just been just an absolute nightmare <laughs> to work with. But as far as the shows, we didn't care if there was two people there or hundreds of people there. Our biggest thing is we look at each other and if it's like one of those low shows where like there's two kids there, we're like, these two kids are gonna get the best show of their freaking lives, yeah. You know? Cause I remember like we went Oklahoma City. I think like two, three people showed up and they're like, hey, if you guys just want us to give you a guarantee and you guys can drive, we're like, oh, hell no. We unloaded and we put on a show like just as if we were at home playing to our people or whatever. And those three people were like, I can't believe you guys stayed and played. We're like, why would we not? Mm -hmm. This is what we love to do. You know what I mean? Cool if you can't you. get past it, like, maybe think about this, you know, because maybe it's not for you, you know? That is very, very cool of you. Uh, let's do final question for you guys and we'll let you go. Uh, what is your personal goals for the band when we're talking, let's say we do a recap this time next year, exactly this date next year, you've accomplished these things in between now and then. What are your personal goals? Uh, to see you at the Grammys. Be hanging out with you on the red carpet. You're going to be on my shoulders interviewing us and um, you're going to be smoking a fat one. And then you're going to be handing me stuff with hot sauce because I can't answer any questions about um, Forrest Gump at this time because we've made the party a little too it's hard. The at the best party. answer I've ever gotten. And then, uh, yeah, and we're going to push Kim Kardashian on the way. I'm like, just move, okay? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Get in you. So, <laughs> I love it. That's a fantastic yeah. answer. Yeah. And then for yourself. Um, Just more. You know, like, I, I don't know. It's just... We already asked ourselves when going into this, you know, it was so funny because like things just keep stepping up and going further. And it's like, how not to lose your head with this stuff, right? And how not to let it go and be like Mr. Big Head and everything like that. And I just know these guys and myself, we just don't have that bone in our body because we're just happy every day we wake up and get to do this. So with that being said, it's just it's like whatever happens from here on out, we knew what we signed up for. So with that being said, whether it's gigantic, small, whatever it is, we are always going to give everything and every ounce of ourselves to get to that point, regardless of where we land, because we've already made our decision about a year ago to do so. I love it. Thank you, gentlemen, for for being awesome, making us laugh a couple times, uh, making fantastic Look music, being really cool cats, booking shows at the Whiskey Go Go near my stomping ground, so I can entertain, uh, be entertained, and, and enjoy your set. Maybe buy you a beer or two. Yeah. And uh, hopefully when it's announced, we can help promote the show a little bit too. Get some people out there. It'd be fun. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Preacher from Nevada. Give it hell yeah! yeah. Uh, I'm going to make it a three-dimensional heart. I'm going to do a heart this way. <laughs>